not reflect well on the Secret Service. According to the information currently available, a combination of routine high security levels, slow response to information, and possible negligence occurred. The US Secret Service reports that both the former and current presidents are constantly threatened. These threats are taken seriously, and the highly dynamic threat environment is continuously assessed and responded to. Constant high alert can dull vigilance, and from a bodyguard's perspective, this was a pointless event in some remote area. The situation is somewhat similar to the case of Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico, who was also targeted in a seemingly peaceful, sleepy town. The bodyguards have already stated that the local police failed because they did not carefully check the outer perimeter. However, it is clear that securing such events is only possible through cooperation. And now, another theory is lurking around that Cheetle might be handled by Joe Biden because she has worked with him, and mainly, she was hired as director by Biden. Prior to her time at PepsiCo, she had served with the Secret Service for more than 25 years, including on Biden's security details while he was vice president. In a statement announcing her appointment, Biden said he had complete trust in Cheetle, to whom in 2021 he bestowed a presidential rank award which honors exceptional performance as a high-ranking federal civil servant. When Kim served on my security detail when I was vice president, we came to trust her judgment and counsel, Biden said. She is a distinguished law enforcement professional with exceptional leadership skills and was easily the best choice to lead the agency at a critical moment for the Secret Service. Cheetle is one of only two women to ever serve as director of the Secret Service. Previously, she had been the first woman to serve as the agency's assistant director of protective operations. In a 2022 interview with the trade publication Security Magazine, Cheetle reflected on being a woman in the Secret Service. That achievement in a male-dominated industry was not lost on me, Cheetle said. I kept a photo on my desk of the first five women sworn into the service, and I used that to remind me that these women created opportunities for me and I can help others grow and lead as well. So, on the basis of this fact, people are speculating that he might be behind the attack. But first, let's talk about negligence of Secret Service. Was this a colossal failure? It was a failure. Yes or no? Was it a colossal failure is the question. Yes or no? I have admitted this is... There was a silver lining to the attack. Former President Donald Trump was not severely injured. Trump reported on social media that a bullet grazed the upper part of his right ear. After being examined at a local hospital, he left the area under Secret Service protection and flew to New Jersey late Saturday night. His son, Eric Trump, told CBS News on Wednesday that while his father did not require stitches, he sustained a nice flesh wound. To bolster security, Trump's Secret Service detail was augmented with additional resources due to his extensive campaigning. This included extra manpower, counter-sniper teams, drones, and robotic dogs. On the day of the attack, four counter-sniper teams were deployed, and at least a dozen additional police officers and sheriff's deputies assisted the Secret Service and Pennsylvania State Police with rally security, as reported by the Associated Press. In addition, Trump's teleprompter is equipped with protective features, and the flag and podium banners are constructed from steel, according to a law enforcement official. On on Sunday morning, U.S. Secret Service spokesperson Anthony Guglielmi stated that the agency recently enhanced the former president's security detail with additional protective resources and capabilities. He denied any claims that the agency had declined a request for increased security, calling such suggestions absolutely false. The U.S. Secret Service takes threats seriously and acts accordingly based on those threats, Guglielmi said. We are continually assessing the evolving threat environment and responding as needed. Despite these measures, the attack raises significant concerns about security management. The wounding of a former U.S. president by an untrained individual reflects poorly on the Secret Service. Current information suggests that a combination of routine security procedures, delayed responses to information, and potential negligence may have contributed to the incident. The U.S. Secret Service reports that both former and current presidents face ongoing threats, which are taken very seriously. The agency continuously assesses and responds to the highly dynamic threat environment. However, constant high alert can sometimes lead to lapses in vigilance, and from a bodyguard's perspective, the attack in a seemingly remote area might have seemed less concerning. This situation parallels the attack on Slovak Prime Minister Robert Fico in a quiet, peaceful town. The bodyguards have criticized the local police for failing to thoroughly check the outer perimeter. Effective security at such events requires close cooperation between agencies. According to released information, both police and bodyguards were informed of a person with a rifle on a roof. However, this information was either delayed in 
in its verification or initially dismissed as not credible, which proved to be a costly mistake. Following the assassination attempt, rumors circulated suggesting that the shooting was possible due to a lack of additional resources for Trump's protection. It was reported that a member of Trump's security team had requested extra security, but this claim was denied by the Secret Service and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. On June 14, the U.S. Secret Service confirmed that they had recently enhanced the former president's security detail with additional protective resources and capabilities. The skills and background of the assailant, Thomas Matthew Crooks, seemed inadequate for such an attack. A solitary student who faced bullying and was rejected from a school shooting club due to poor skills, Crooks nonetheless managed to target one of the most protected individuals in the world. Given the incident and Crooks' background, there were concerns that he could have become a school shooter. This situation highlights the broader responsibilities of the Secret Service in national risk mitigation, including monitoring and addressing potential threats from individuals with concerning profiles. After the shooting began, the Secret Service sniper team shot the attacker. However, the former president was injured, one person was killed, and two others at the event were seriously wounded. The shooter chose a side position, which was very clever, as people usually move side to side while speaking, not back and forth. This restriction is set by the podium. Videos show Trump turning his head just before the shot, which is probably what saved him. As a result, the bullet grazed his ear, and bodyguards were able to take the former president away. Reportedly, Trump refused to be carried off, as it would have left a poor impression. During the evacuation, it was noticeable that the exit from the stage was relatively uncomfortable and narrow. The lack of a quick and smooth evacuation route indicates that the event was probably not considered a high-priority one. Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheetle is facing the biggest crisis of her tenure. She is a longtime Secret Service employee who briefly worked in the private sector before returning to the agency as director at President Biden's invitation. Chance plays a significant role, and catching a lone actor is naturally very difficult. However, considering the shooter's background, he should not have had any opportunity. The incident means the Secret Service Director's position is unstable, and the same goes for Assistant Director Michael Platy, who is responsible for bodyguard operations. Unfortunately, one must be accountable for one's subordinates, and in such exceptional events, there are many who demand blood. Moreover, in the viral video related to this incident, it is seen that as soon as the firing started, the Secret Service agents covered Trump from all sides. During this time, some female agents wearing black suits and dark glasses were also seen guarding Donald Trump. Was this tragedy preventable, yes or no? Yes. Has the Secret Service been transparent with this committee? Yes. These women took Trump down from the stage and safely took him to the car. During this time, these female agents stood in front of Trump like a shield without caring for their lives. But now, these female agents are on target. According to private reports, some people have alleged that the female agents involved in the Secret Service are the real culprits of the attack on Trump. Biden connected to Trump's shooter. We are learning also more about the shooter's search history, along with images of uh, former President Trump and current President Joe Biden, the shooter, searched for the dates of the upcoming DNC coming up in August in Chicago. And some pictures found in his computer suggest that he might be controlled by some upper hand or Trump's opponent. Had photos on his phone of the former Republican president, President Joe Biden, and other officials, including Attorney General Merrick Garland and FBI, Director Chris Wray, according to two people familiar with the matter. Investigators searching Thomas Matthew Crook's devices have also found that the shooter looked up the dates for the Democratic National Convention, as well as Trump's appearance according to the people who spoke to the Associated Press on the condition of anonymity to discuss details of the ongoing probe. At least once, his browsing history showed signs of him being worried about his own mental state. During private briefings, FBI officials and the head of the Secret Service gave lawmakers the most detailed look yet at the would-be assassin Thomas Matthew Crooks. Crooks, who has no criminal history or clear political beliefs, came close to killing Trump, but no clear motive has emerged. This official take lines up with what people who knew him remember. Member. Several old classmates said they never heard him talk about any particular political ideology. Vincent Taormina, a former classmate who went to middle and high school with Crooks, mentioned that Crooks had a general dislike for politicians from both parties. Vincent recalled a time in seventh grade during a classroom political debate when he voiced his support for Trump, and Crooks seemed incredulous. He says, Aren't you Hispanic and you like Trump? Mr. Taormina said. He said, That's a little stupid. Mr. Taormina brushed off the encounter and didn't have many other interactions with Mr. Crooks. However, he 
disagreed with other classmates' claims that Crooks had been bullied or was a loner, saying he was smart and had his own small group of friends. I didn't know him personally or as a friend, but he wasn't bullied and he wasn't a recluse, Mr. Tawamina said. Since the shooting on Saturday, the FBI has been going through Mr. Crooks's possessions, including two phones and at least one laptop, looking for clues about his motive. So far, they haven't found any sign that Crooks, who was a registered Republican, had strong political views in either direction, FBI officials told lawmakers. The FBI hasn't found any evidence of co-conspirators or connections to foreign actors, according to two top Bureau officials. During tense calls, House and Senate members